This is how you crochet a ball. The technique is called a mikarumi, and once you understand these steps, you can pretty much crochet anything that is stuffed. But for this, I'm going to start with a magic ring, and I'm going to put eight single crochet into the center of the ring. The yarn is just a regular medium weight yarn, but I am using a 3.75 millimeter hook. The smaller the hook, the tighter the stitches. Now I'm trying to make this ball as easy to understand as I can. So each part is going to have its own row, and the row will be crocheted in its entirety. If you'd like to see more of these kind of stitch tutorials, please let me know in the comments or by liking the video, and I'll try to get more of them up soon. This is how you crochet a ball, using a technique called omigurumi. In part one, we put eight single crochet into a magic ring, and now for row two, we are going to put two single crochet into every single stitch. We're not going to slip stitch into the first stitch, but I am going to use a stitch marker to indicate which stitch is my first stitch. I had to say that pretty slowly. But by putting two single crochet into every single stitch, we are increasing the row by eight stitches for a total of 16 stitches. And that is going to be the beginning of our circle. Now, if you want to go back to part one, all you have to do is follow the comment. And if you want to move on to part three, it'll be in the comments of this video. This series is the first stitch tutorial where I'm doing an entire project in many parts. But each row is going to have its own part and each row is going to be worked in its entirety. If you like these kind of close-up stitch tutorials, be sure to like and follow. I post them every single day on my page. And if you want to learn how to crochet, be sure to check out my live schedule on my profile. And that'll let you know when I'm hosting my next crochet lesson. But I also have beginner-friendly videos on my page. You just have to scroll a little. Now that we're at the end of row two, I'm going to pull on my string a little bit more to close up the gap, and we're going to move on to part three. This is how you crochet a ball, part three. In part two, we worked on round two, which was two single crochet into each stitch. And again, I'm using a stitch marker to mark the beginning of every single row. But if you don't have a stitch marker yourself, you can just use another string of yarn, or a bobby pin, or a paper clip, whatever you have around the house. Now for this round, we're going to crochet two single crochet into the first stitch, and one single crochet into the second. Now I like to count one, two, three, four, five, three all the way around in my head and this will help me track two things first i'm on the third round so i need my stitches to end on a three and second my first two stitches are always going to be an increased stitch meaning i'm putting two stitches into one and as long as my row ends with the third stitch being a single single crochet into the last stitch I know that I didn't skip any increases or regular stitches along the way. If you like these kind of close-up stitch tutorials, be sure to like and follow. I post them every single day on my page. And if you like these kind of project tutorials, let me know in the comments so I'll know to make more in the future. But this is the end of part three, and part four is going to be in the comments. This is how to crochet a ball part four. If you haven't checked out the other three parts, just follow the comment and it'll take you back to where you need to go. Now at the beginning, I'm still using my stitch marker to mark the first stitch of the row. And for this row, I'm going to be putting two single crochet into the first and then one single crochet into the next two. So one and two are gonna be an increase and then three and four are gonna be my regular single crochet. So one, two, three, four. I like to count my rows this way because it helps me ensure that I don't skip any of my increases because I know that one and two are always increases and three and four are regular crochet. 
So as long as my four is the very last stitch of the row, I know I didn't skip any. If you like these kind of close-up stitch tutorials, be sure to like and follow. I post them every single day on my page. And if you have any questions or you would like to request a stitch or a project, just leave me a comment and it'll help me narrow down on what to post next. As for the questions, I am fairly responsive in the comments, but if there's something I can't answer in words or I find it's a common question, then I will make a video response to it. But my main goal is to get more people into crochet, get others back into crochet, and to make it a little less daunting. But this is the end of part four. Part five will be in the comments, and you can keep watching the video if you want to see the rest of the row. Happy hooking! This is how to crochet a ball, part five. If you haven't checked out the other four parts, just tap on the comment and it'll take you back to where you need to go. Now I'm still using my stitch marker to mark the beginning of the row, and this is going to be my last row of increases. So I'm going to put two single crochet into the first for my increase, and then I'm going to put one regular single crochet into the next three stitches. And if you want to keep going with the counting pattern, you would count until you got to five, with the first two being the increase and the last three being the regular single crochets. If you wanted to make your ball bigger than this, all you would have to do is add more increase rows. So row six would be an increase and then a regular crochet into the next four stitches. And then row seven would be an increase and regular, regular crochet into the next five stitches. And I'm, I, I really hope you're starting to see a pattern here. But as long as you increase by eight stitches every single row, your circle is going to stay flat. And that is not just for the single crochet. You can do that with the half double crochet, the double crochet, the treble crochet. Um, the fancy stitches, it gets a little bit more complicated. But this technique, formula, whatever you want to call it, applies to every single basic stitch. You also don't have to use eight single crochet to start out with. You can start with six. I don't know if I would start with five, but you can start with seven, nine, 10, 11, 12, whatever you wanna do. Now, the smaller the number, the more pointy the tip. So if you start with six or five, it's gonna give you like a, like a cone shape, but only in the center. Um, if you wanted a cone shape, you would have to go about that differently, but I digress. If you went higher in the number, like 10 or 12, the hole in the center would be a little bit bigger because the stitches would make it bigger, but your circle would get flatter for longer. I can talk more about that, but I'm running out of time, and part six will be in the comments. Thanks for watching! This is how to crochet a ball part six. If you haven't checked out the other parts yet, just tap on the comment and it'll take you back to where you need to go. Now for rows six through 15, I'm going to put one single crochet into every single stitch around. And this is where the stitch marker is really handy because it lets me know where each row begins because we don't have a seam since we're working in a continuous spiral. I'm using a row counter. It has a little button that I can click for every single row but you can also use your phone or you can use a pen and paper and just tally mark it. You don't have to buy one of those is what I'm trying to say, but they are useful if you plan on doing stuff like this a lot. After about row 10, your work will start to curl and it's supposed to do that. And after 13 ish, you'll start to notice that it is a nice little bowl. And then 15 is going to be the last row before we start our decreases. So go ahead and go to the comments for part seven. This is how to crochet a ball part seven. This is the third time I'm doing this voiceover, so pray for me that it will actually go through. But we are going to start with an invisible single crochet decrease. So we're gonna pick up the front loop of the first single crochet, then we're going to pick up the front loop from the second single crochet, pull up a loop of course, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. 
It is called an invisible decrease because the back loop is preventing a gap from showing up because it would otherwise show up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, consider yourself lucky. It is, it, it's annoying. But next we're going to put one single crochet into the next three stitches before we make another invisible single crochet decrease. And if you're a pattern person, you probably already guessed we are going to work the opposite of our increase stitches. So a decrease is considered crocheting two stitches together. So since we ended with an increase and in three regular stitches, now we are going to work a decrease in three regular stitches. As long as your row ends with the third regular single crochet in the last stitch, you can be sure that you did not miss any stitches or any decreases. Now we are going to start stuffing after this row and I'm going to include that in the next video. And over the next couple of videos, we are almost done. I will also give you some tips on how to shape it so that it doesn't look flat or bumpy. And if you like these kind of close-up stitch tutorials, project tutorials, or overall educational crochet content, be sure to like and follow. I post them every single day on my page. And if you want to check out my lives, I announce them every Sunday or Monday for the entire week. And I would love to hang out with you sometime. And if you can't tell, I'm a little delirious because I'm getting really tired, but I'm trying to get all these out for y'all. So I apologize because tomorrow I'm probably going to watch this and cringe. But let's cringe together. Part 8 will be in the comments. Hopefully it's not going to take me all night to finish this. I will see you there. This is how to crochet a ball part 8. If you want to check out the other 7 parts, just tap on the comment and it'll take you back to where you need to go. We just finished our first decrease row with row 16 and now we are going to start stuffing the ball. The goal here is to stuff it as evenly as possible. We're not going to put a lot in there. We're not going to do any shaping yet. The only thing that I like to focus on is that it's distributed evenly and that there aren't any lumps or clumps. Sometimes when you grab the stuffing or, and pack it too tightly at the beginning, it'll start to form lumps and get clumpy. And I'm trying to make sure that the pieces that I'm adding blend together, if that makes sense. Then we're going to start row 17 with another invisible decrease. I go over that in detail in part 7. And then we're going to put one single crochet into the next two stitches before we add another invisible single crochet decrease. And that is going to be our pattern for the rest of the row. So another thing about the stuffing and now working the rows. If you overfill at this point, you could pick up the stuffing and work it into the stitches, and that is really hard to clean up. So I would recommend if you're running into that problem to take some of the stuffing out. You can always add more after this row. and. As long as you can separate the stuffing from your fabric with your fingers, you're good to go. And again, if you like these kind of close-up crochet tutorials, be sure to like and follow. I post them every single day on my page. If you have any questions about this project or a stitch or you would like to request a stitch, you can leave them in a comment on any of my videos. Now you're very welcome to watch the rest of this video, but part 9 will be in the comments. And that's when we're going to start stuffing some more and actually start shaping a little bit. Oh, and if you want to check out my live schedule, I post it at the beginning of every week. So you can see the next time I go live, I usually have one day where I work on Plarn, one day where I just work on a project, and then one day I teach crochet lessons. So if you're a beginner or advanced, go ahead and check those out if that's something you're interested in. I'd love to hang out.
This is How to Crochet a Ball, Part 9. We just finished decreasing on row 17, and now we're going to keep stuffing and shaping before we start row 18. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of pushing everything out to the sides, and when I add stuffing now, I'm going to add it into the center and then use my thumbs to push it out. Essentially, I'm trying to use the stuffing to stretch out the fabric. It's not very flexible, so I'm not actually stretching it, but I am making sure that every inch inside that ball is covered. And I'm doing that from the inside out. So just squeezing it on in there. I do rotate the ball while I'm doing this to make sure that all the sides are covered evenly. And this is really the part where I try to stuff the most into the ball without going up because I'm going to stuff the top part over the next couple of rows. And then from here, we're just going to add another invisible decrease and then we're going to put a regular single crochet into the next. After that, we're going to stuff some more. Um, we're going to try and finish most of the stuffing after this and then we're going to have one more row of decreases, then a tiny bit more stuffing and then we're going to sew it together. So all in all, I think I've got 11 parts on this. So here we're putting our single crochet decrease, and then a single crochet, and then another decrease, and then another single crochet all the way until the end. And again, if you like these kind of close-up stitch tutorials, be sure to like and follow. I post them every single day on my page. If you have any questions or would like to request a stitch or project, you can leave a comment on any one of my videos. And if I can't answer your question in words, I will respond with a video. And other than that, you can enjoy the rest of this video, or you can go to the comments to move on to part 10. Happy hooking! This is how to crochet a ball part 10. We just finished decreasing on row 18 and we're gonna stuff as much as we can into this ball without it being too full. But in my experience, if you feel like you've overstuffed just a little bit, you're probably better off than understuffing because over time it does seem to shrink. So I am again inserting it into the center and then I'm using my fingers to just squish it out to the sides. And this part is the shaping part. Then once I feel like the majority of the ball is pretty stiff, I am going to start stuffing the top. But again, I'm inserting it into the center, and then I'm using my fingers to push it to the sides. Sometimes it also helps to use your outside fingers to um, feel for crevices or soft spots. And then you can just add stuffing or focus on adding stuffing in those areas. And then once it's mostly full, we're going to leave a little bit out at the top still. Once it's mostly full, we are going to start our last row of decreases before we sew it together. And while you're watching this, I'm just going to say it one more time. If you like these kind of close-up stitch tutorials, be sure to like and follow. I post them every single day on my page. If you have any questions or would like to request a stitch or a project, you can leave that in a comment on any of my videos. If I can't answer your question in words, I will make a video response to them. Okay, so I think we're going to start decreasing. Nope, we got more stuffing. Okay. I really like stuffing these things, apparently. But it's worth it. It's worth it. I wasn't as tired when I filmed this as I am doing the voiceovers right now, but I think we're almost there. Nope, we got more. How about now? Nope, some more. <laughs> Okay, 
about now? Nope. Do we even decrease in this video? Is that in part 11? I thought part 11 was just sewing it. I think. Okay, part 11 is going to be in the comments because we're not decreasing this round. I, I think I just really want to hit it home that you stuff this little baby as much as it can take. So I'll see you in part 11. This is how to crochet a ball part 11. This is the last part. Also what I find to be the most satisfying. I forgot to film the decreases. No. Okay, so the decrease row is eight single crochet decreases. That's it. Um, we're gonna end up with eight stitches, just like we started with eight stitches. And now when I'm closing the gap, I am taking my needle from the inside out and I'm only picking up that top loop and oh my gosh I can't believe I forgot so I'm gonna do that for every single stitch and then um I know I'm not picking up the top loop here I'm just going into the stitch because I wanted to and now when I pull on it it's going to be a perfect little closed hole there we go that's my favorite part. That's where the serotonin kicks in for me. But, um, yeah. That is how you crochet a ball. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you stuck around for it. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to re-listen to these voiceovers, so I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed now and maybe stay off of TikTok tomorrow for it to go take a break until I go live but let me know what you think and thanks for hanging out this is how to crochet a ball part 10.5 the last footage if you watch part 11 um I was so tired and when I was doing the voiceover for part 11 but you'll know that I thought I forgot to film the last row and because I was so tired after posting all of the 11 parts in one sitting, except for the break where I took my son to baseball, I took a little bit of a break from posting today and instead just took the time to kind of clear my phone and go through all the videos and um, I found it and I was so excited. So here it is. All, it, all this row is, is just eight single crochet decreases. Um, they're invisible decreases, and they're invisible because I'm only working into the front loop. And by doing that, I get rid of the gap that would be there if I was using regular decrease stitches. I'm still using the stitch marker. I'm still using, using my row clicker, even though it's the last row. But I've made it a habit at this point, and um, it's just easier that way. But since this is the end of the instructions... Um, you can move on with your life or you can finish the video, but I did want to take a moment to say that I'm just really grateful for everyone watching these videos. I take a lot of time making the videos and before I make the videos, I mean, it took me even, it took me years to learn all this stuff. And for so long, I felt like I was just, you know, working in the shadow and doing my thing and, and studying as much as I could about this craft and now that I have an outlet where I can share that knowledge and it's so well received I'm just mind blown it's just a nice feeling um yeah I've got a lot more videos coming I actually wrote down kind of like a filming schedule because I mean they take a lot of time but I I just wanted to get an idea of how long it would take me to get through the videos that I have in my brain right now and filming I think it's 18 videos a week or eight yes at least 18 videos not including if I have to split it up I am filming through April so in other words just thank you thank you for seeing the value in this 
And thank you for really making this a labor of love because it's a dream come true.